I focus on like on my channel, at least on like the very, very basics of finance. So getting people to initially understand why it's so important to start investing, how compound interest works, because that's something that, you know, maybe you had like a very brief section on that in like high school or something, but that, I mean, just the concept of compound interest and having your money work for you is not something that a lot of people realize until later on in life. And almost all of the time they wish that they had started sooner. So as far as like optimizing your money, I think a big part of that is changing the mindset of how you need your money to work for you and not trading your time for money. This is Better Wealth with Caleb Williams. Suzanne, welcome to the Better Wealth Show. Thank you for having me, Caleb. I totally bailed on saying your last name right at the last minute, but you, it, it's, it's, it's uh, pronounced Stavertlik. Yes, See, exactly. having, someone, having a name like Williams, I am very empathetic to uh, <laughs> why, uh, why uh, last names can be tricky. So first of all, thank you so much for not only just being in my life, but coming on the show. I'm very excited about this, this topic because I am just getting into YouTube. I, I am $25 richer because of you. Um, we'll explain that in a second. Um, but then also like you have a remarkable story of you're, you're actually going full time on YouTube. You're talking about personal finance. I want you to talk about all of that. Um, but you're actually like, we, when we talk about living intentionally and unlocking intentional living, you are, you are doing that. You're helping so many people. You're creating amazing content and you're making enough money to do this full time. And that's like really inspiring. You're also help people like me who don't know how to make a thumbnail or last, I mean, this is this is the first week that I actually understand that there's this thing called titling videos. So I'm a little bit slower, but I, I look up to you in this space and um, I'm really excited to just talk about this. And for my listeners, whether watching on YouTube or listening on, on the podcast, YouTube can be a phenomenal place to grow your business. Potentially you could be like Suzanne and go full time. Um, and I'm more and more people I'm meeting, I'm, I'm realizing they're living a life um, of their dream or they're getting closer to where they want to go because they're able to use technology. And YouTube is something that I've spent a lot of time recently because I really believe it's going to be the platform that takes my message to the next level. And so with that, how's that for an introduction? That was awesome. You hyped me up. <laughs> I, I'm setting the bar high and I know you're going to, you're going to go over. Um, so, so for, for, before we jump into like YouTube, let's take it, like, let's take a step back. It's not like you're 55 years old in the finance space, like you're young as well. So why don't we, why don't we like look back on like your story, um, how we met, cause we met through a mutual friend and, and then why YouTube? Like, when did this idea come up? Yeah. So to give a little bit of background, I was freelance, a freelance designer before I decided very recently that I was going to go full-time with YouTube. Um, and so a lot of my interest with like personal finance stemmed from that because after college, you know, I was like applying for traditional jobs. But once I decided that I was going to do my own thing, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much that I have to figure out as far as managing my own money. And, you know, not being on a paycheck and having that consistent income, I knew that I had to really keep a tight hold on like how much money was coming in and out and being smart about where I was putting that, whether that was in retirement accounts or other investments. And so I had to really focus in on like learning as much as I could about that. And as I was doing that, I really realized that other people my age who were like just out of college or a couple of years out of college didn't have that just base foundation of financial education that they needed. And so it with my YouTube channel, I started that when I had one of my friends who was moving across the country get a job offer. And she started asking me questions. She was like, how, like, how do I know if I'm being paid enough to live on this? They're offering me this 401k thing. What is that? And so I started, my first few videos were really targeted at that one friend um, and helping her out with the questions that she had. Cause I figured if she had those questions, there were a lot of other people in the same situation as well. Yeah, I, that's, that's really fascinating. And you started about a year ago and your first video, at least that I see is how, how to rent your first apartment. Exactly. So was that, was that towards your friend? And then you just yes. put it up on YouTube? 
which which is crazy because that video has over six thousand views, which is more than my top video right now. So that's that's just that just shows you the power of consistency, doing this right. Um, and and you have some videos that have a lot more than a thousand views. Um, so why the name Arvabel? Yeah, so that was actually the name of my great grandmother. And um, she and her husband back in, I don't know, the 50s had a hamburger business and they turned that into a chain. They opened up a bunch of different restaurants, didn't necessarily go as they planned, but it was kind of taking from that entrepreneurial uh, spirit, I guess I wanted to use that. And also, as we saw in the beginning of the podcast, I have a horrible last name that no one could say or spell. So it wasn't great for branding. And I kind of wanted something that was a little bit separated from myself. Like I didn't necessarily want to be like Suzanne, the finance girl. Yeah, I, right. I kind of wanted a more like abstract name, I guess that I could, uh, build off of. So you, you can go to Arva Bell on YouTube, if you type that in, it will come up and you could do something on money, your videos come up. Um, so talk to me about the insecurities of, of starting a YouTube channel, because it's funny now. Cause like, I just crank, crank videos out. I see, a, I mean, there's some comments that I get, like someone called me a parasite the other day and just like, just things that I go like, man, I'm, I'm glad I, I don't care about what this random person on the internet thinks of me. Cause it still hurts and they're random. Um, Talk to me about like the, the t like starting, was that a fear? Because I think one of the reasons why people just don't go do it is they're afraid of criticism and they're afraid of like seeing themselves on camera and hearing what they're, what they sound like. Was that any, was that something that you struggled with or what, what other insecurities were you facing when you first started? Definitely. So, so, I mean, I had always thought about starting a YouTube channel, even in like high school and college. And I think at that time, it was a lot of pressure of like, oh, no, what are the people in my life going to think of me? What are like the random people at my college going to think of me? Um, and once I was out of college, I kind of realized that like it just doesn't matter. And I think we everyone has a tendency to. I think. We think that people are judging us more than they actually do. And. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, like, do people from my high school, from my college know that I have a YouTube channel? I have no idea. Do they care? Absolutely not. So, you know, I, I figured if I was helping people by putting that information out, it would be a disservice to not do that, to not share the information that I know and help other people. So I had this, I had this thought the other day and I was thinking like, I think people just don't think about others because most people are thinking about themselves with the exception. I think Donald Trump, I think people do wake up in the morning thinking about him. And I think there's a couple other people that like that there's an exception, like you wake up and you're like, like I, you know, you might be ticked or you might be happy about this person. But for the most part, majority of people, they think and they care about themselves. It's just how it is. And so if we understand that it can be so freeing because at this moment, there's very few people that are probably thinking of you and I, and right. that's, that's actually really freeing. Um, and, and, you know, there's, there's some change that can get released when we, when, when we understand that when it comes to YouTube, this was, this was news to me, but like, how do you make money on YouTube and how would someone who's like watching this right now, or someone that has a channel, like what are, how did you go from like zero to like, I'm, I'm curious if you'd be willing to share how much money you've made in this last year on YouTube for you to feel confident enough to, you know, go full time. Cause I know it was just kind of a part-time gig. Um, right. And so how, how does number one, how, how do you make money on YouTube? And then um, if you're willing to share, like how much money did you make in your first year doing YouTube? Yeah. So I was monetized last March. So about a year ago, like you said earlier, um, I've had the channel, I guess for almost two years, not quite. Um, so the whole first year I was not monetized at all from March until the end of 2020, I made probably about like. Uh, I don't remember the exact number, but it was somewhere around like 35,000 just off of YouTube ads. And that's for like going from basically 1000 subscribers in March to amazing. roughly 40,000 by the end of the year. Um, so as far as like monetizing on YouTube, there are definitely several different paths that you can take from that. YouTube, once you reach a certain number of subscribers and a certain number of watch hours, you can turn on ads on your channel. And so then they pay you 
AdSense, which you've probably heard like some YouTubers say. Um, so they're paying you to run those ads. Uh, and that goes like directly into your YouTube, your Google account. And apart from that, there are a lot of people like you who have their own businesses who can monetize outside of the platform, either like providing value on YouTube, but then directing them towards their own services or their own products. And there's also affiliate marketing. So there are some companies that will pay you to you know, use a certain link to direct people towards their products. So there are a lot of different ways that you can do it. And it's not always like just that AdSense money because that amount that you make from YouTube directly can really change greatly depending on what topics you're talking about. Yeah, and it's my understanding that people that talk about certain things like money attract certain like higher net worth people. And so you get paid more for ads than maybe someone who is is just like blogging their high school journey. Right, right. Because you also have to think about the companies who are actually running the ads yep. and paying for that ad space. So the higher profit businesses are going to pay more for those ads. So we're talking about like banking, anything business related, anything e-commerce related, all of those are going to have a lot higher CPMs, which is how much you get paid per million or er, per thousand views. Um, those are going to be higher than someone who's talking about uh, like what, what makeup brush they use or, you know, the new highlighters that they bought at right. Office Depot, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's and and it really is fascinating. And what's interesting about YouTube is they they really break down the analytics, the watch time, you know, subscribers. Now, how much money you make on on different videos, and it's it really is remarkable how YouTube has built a platform that has incentivized people like creators like yourself, and and then also there's a ton of people because Google there's a ton of people that are using YouTube and it's just, it's just like the, it's growing. And I've just seen for myself, like I, I don't have the exact numbers. I really should, but I just got monetized like a week ago or so. And so I think like my first week I've, I made like $25, which is, which is amazing. Like, I just think I'm just humbled to, to like, I'm, I would do it without the money to be honest. And, um, and it's so interesting to see all the type of relationships and people that have come into our business because they stumbled upon a YouTube video. And so that for me got me hooked. But then when I, but then I'm like really competitive. And when I see, when I see people like yourself that are like going from, you know, from March to now, now have over 50,000 subscribers and in, in less than a year have made $35,000 and now going to like double down, like that is remarkable. And, and I can't help but to think like, oh, if a company, if you're listening to this, and you have a company or you have something that you're, that you're wanting to very much promote, if you do this right, it could, it could change your business's life. And that's like, that's what's really neat. And like, we're all in on YouTube. In fact, I am focusing more on YouTube in, the, in 2021 than I am my podcast. And that was reversed last year. I like, last year I produced a podcast and just repurposed it on YouTube. And now I'm almost gonna do the exact opposite because I've just seen, I've seen such growth and such opportunity. Yeah. And it's really cool too, that YouTube does provide you with all of those analytics. Cause that tells you a lot. If you run your own business, that tells you a lot about who is actually interested in the things that you're talking about and the things that you're selling. So, yeah. So let's talk about some YouTube hacks for, for those that actually will like want to take this to, to the next level. I'm going to go through my quick, quick ones, and then you can kind of like summarize. And then I want to talk about money um, because while this is a subject about money, you being your greatest asset, you bringing in passive cash flow, which is not necessarily so passive early on, but each video is like a real estate property. I, someone once told me that I'm like, wow, that is amazing. Like people are watching videos right now while we're recording this, which is insane. Right. Um, so my, when I'm learning about YouTube, it's a, it's a, it's a search en engine. So number one, like we want to be in, in tune with like what people are actually searching and we want to be able to add value. Money follows value. And so if, if we have that mindset, so number one, you want to really understand what traffic, like who's, who's typing in what to Google. And so you want to do some research there. And I'm just starting to learn this as of this week. Then you obviously, it's like marketing 101. You want a thumbnail that draws people in. And a thumbnail is just the picture that uh, is the reason why you press on the video. Um, and then your content has to be good too. And you, your content is like, I asked you, you script your videos and I, I believe you do. And it's very apparent 
because it's very tight. You get right to the point and it's very valuable. And I think where I, I go astray is sometimes I just ramble and it's like, okay, I could have tightened that up. And so anything else that you've learned in your YouTube journey, if someone wanted to start a channel or has a channel that they can do that are like YouTube secrets that can really take them to the next level. Yeah. So like you mentioned, the title and the thumbnail are really important because that's what people see first. That's you could have the best video on YouTube on your topic, but if no one clicks on it, then it doesn't really matter. Um, and then the other thing is the watch time on your video. So how long people are actually like paying attention to the content, how long they're staying on your page, on your video page, because YouTube as a platform, they want people to stay on YouTube. So the longer that you can keep, keep people on there, yeah. the more YouTube is going to push out your content. So yeah, keeping um, people interested in the, the entire video, if you can, at least like, I would say aim for like 50, 60% uh, audience retention on that. And you can see that all in your YouTube analytics, but even going back on videos that don't perform as well and looking at that audience retention and seeing where people fall off. And maybe you see on every video, people start falling off at three minutes. So maybe on your next video, can you throw something interesting in or something that like kind of changes it a little bit around three minutes so that people stay through the rest of the video? That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. And um, really good tips. And so if you if you do have more questions about YouTube, you can feel free to reach out to me. I'm sure you can also reach out to Suzanne because you just, again, are super generous and you're just doing a lot of great things. So let's switch over to personal finance. Your channel is all about personal finance. And um, I'm wondering from a big picture, well, how do you think about money? Um, this is no judgment zone. And I love to have a dialogue. Um, so how do you think about money? If you were to sit down with a friend and you had a whiteboard, because every good conversation needs to have a whiteboard, and you were to sketch out how to think about money, how would, how would that conversation go? So I think the first thing would just be determining how you want money to work for you. And like for me personally, it's kind of buying back the freedom in my life. So it's being able to do work that I enjoy, being able to like spend time with people that I enjoy spending time with and not having every minute of my day being like, okay, I'm working this hourly job, um, you know, and this is how much I get paid at the end of the day and that's it. So for me, it's like building passive income streams, building things that provide other people value that you can also monetize. And um, I guess really thinking of it as a tool more than an end goal. Yeah, thinking of money as a tool is very empowering because it's like, okay, the goal is not necessarily money itself, but it's like money is a tool to help us get to where we want to go. And so, and also if you don't have, if you don't think with the end in mind, then it's like, what's the point? So what I'm hearing you say is like, get very clear and like what kind of life you want to live. Understand that money itself is not good or bad. It's a tool to help us accomplish what we want to accomplish. One of the key things that I like talking a lot about is optimization and efficiency. And what I love about the word optimization is you is it, it's essentially taking something and making it better, making it more effective. So I would say like an airplane versus driving versus walking is uh, flying is could be optimized or driving could be optimized depending on the situation, but they both are way more efficient than than walking. And, and so when it comes to this concept of our money being a tool, what are some like key ways or what were some videos that you've done in, in, in the past that you're like, wow, like if people understood this, this would be huge for efficiency. This would be amazing to help people get to where they want to go quicker, faster, better, more optimized. I'm, I'm curious because I know you do your research and your videos are well, very well put together. Yeah. So I think for me, I focus on like on my channel, at least on like the very, very basics of finance. So getting people to initially understand why it's so important to start investing, how compound interest works, because that's something that, you know, maybe you had like a very brief section on that in like high school or something, but that, I mean, just the concept of compound interest and having your money work for you is not something that a lot of people realize until later on in life. And almost all of the time they wish that they had started sooner. So as far as like optimizing your money, I think a big part of that is changing the mindset of how you need your money to work for you and not trading your time for money. 
It's good. Um, yeah. And really that comes back to building those passive income streams and investing your money in places where it can work for you. And you're not trading like that hourly rate for, um, for your time. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about that? Because as you leave your job and do this full time, that's a big, I, I, I mean, you may be taking a couple steps back in the short term, potentially to go ahead, but the biggest difference is it doesn't seem like now you're trading time for money because you are doing freelances for freelancing. And I'm sure the popular way to pay you, it was time. So talk to me a little bit more about that time and your concept of wh what your goals are. I know Robert Kiyosaki is like very much into buy assets that produce money to put in your pocket. How do, do you view, do you view YouTube as a job? That's just like, it's, you know, you get, you have to spend time, but you get to do something that you love or you, are you viewing YouTube more as like an asset? I'm really viewing YouTube more as like an asset. And like you said, whoever was comparing it to real estate and owning different properties, that really is kind of how YouTube works because I mean, as we speak, people are watching videos that I put out a year ago or a year and a half or two years ago. And yep. maybe those aren't the most popular videos, but just that accumulation of those views coming in builds a little bit of money. And the more of those videos that you put out and the more value that provide that you provide, the more you're rewarded for that. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because your latest video was on the richest man in Babylon. And that is by far the most favorite book I've read and probably had the biggest impact on my life um, because it was one of the first books I read and it got me so into like, oh, like this, this can be attainable, like this can be done. And like, it got me so fired up to want to start investing in the stock market and do other things. What were some of your big ideas that you learned through that, um, that book? Um, I mean, a big piece of that book was just investing, like taking, even if you're making a small amount, no matter what that amount is, taking a small portion of that and just setting it aside. And that's what I've had to do in my own life. And like you said earlier, I was freelancing and I was actually, I started out freelancing for one of our friends and I did a little bit of work before that. But I mean, I can tell you that in the last two years from like the day that I stepped out of college, I was charging people maybe like $15 an hour or something. Yeah. And I slowly raised that rate. Um, and it just, it got to a point where that no longer, like at this point in my life, I feel like I can do greater things like with YouTube and by putting my money to work for me than trading that hourly. Yeah. Is there any other things that came like that were that stuck out in the richest man in Babylon that were like, man, th these are things that were like, I need to share with the world. I know for me, it was this concept of a 10% of what you make is yours to keep. And the equation of pay yourself first before you even pay, pay other people, like maybe you even owe bills, but like you are, he's so dedicated to, I will pay myself first. And if you actually get in that habit, but you, we wouldn't be in the problems we are today in America if everyone had like that, that definite of purpose as it relates to saving money. Yeah, that I think for me, that was probably the biggest lesson that I took away from it as well, because it, I mean, that's something that so many people struggle with is just initially set, setting aside that money and doing that first. And like you said, I mean, there's some crazy statistic of how many Americans don't even have like $1,000 or $5,000 saved up. And you really don't know what can happen. And so just taking that first initial step of saving a little bit of your income, but doing that consistently and treating that like, you know, I think I said in my video, like treat that like you treat paying the IRS, like you make it an obligation to pay yourself or else like you're going to be in trouble eventually. So. Yeah, I would yeah. say that that was the biggest lesson that I took from it too. I, I had someone else on the show that was talking about solar and they he said that people make their electricity bill almost every time. Exactly. <laughs> that, that would exactly. be the one thing that you wouldn't want to like skip. You're like, I don't need uh, electricity or, and yes, you do. So if you, if you had that conviction, momentum would hap happen. Exactly. Like, you know how when your Wi-Fi goes out, it's like you drop everything and you're like, exactly. the Wi-Fi has to be fixed or else I can't function. Like you have to treat paying yourself the same way.
Well, <laughs> and, and here's a sad reality. I think the average person spends more time or like twice as more as much time planning their next vacation than all year thinking about money or like planning as it relates to what they should do with their money, which is just, which is crazy, but it's, I don't think it shocks anybody because it's like, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, you have another video that hasn't gotten a ton of views, but I think is really good. It's the seven side, uh, seven side hustle ideas. Any, I don't know if you remember um, the seven, but any like anything that came up through that. And the reason I ask is, I think a lot of people that are, are going to be watching this or l listening to this may want to have a side hustle for themselves, may have kids that want to get into a side hustle. And I love, I love this concept because it's like um, we are a great asset. If you're on, if you're not happy with where you're at, you can start something on the side, and that thing, just like you're a perfect example, that that thing could, you know create freedom, future freedom, future connections, future opportunities. And so from that video, any anything that jumped out there? Um, so I think with side hustles, there are a lot of different routes that you can go with that. I would say do something that you enjoy, definitely, because it may not turn into a business or something that you can do full time. So at least like enjoy it while you're doing it. But um, I would say also do something that's providing value to someone else and something something that kind of mixes your talents with, uh, I guess, your goals. So I think one of the more obscure examples that I gave in one of those side hustle videos was if you're good at photography, but you live in like some rural town, something that a lot of real estate listings don't have is pictures for like raw land. So that may be something that you can do. And just finding something fun like that, uh, that you're good at, but that you're also helping someone out else out with i think is like the best way to approach side hustles yeah and and now in the gig economy like you can make money by walking dogs which exactly would be horrible for someone like me but for someone that loves dogs like how amazing like that's a good example of like if you love dogs you can get paid to spend time with dogs and even better yet you might not have to own dogs anymore so you get to save money on not having to take care of them like you know now all the dogs uh, loving people are going to be disliking this video. But at, at the end of the day, it's like, that's a perfect example of like, you're providing value for somebody, you're enjoying it, and you're making money while doing it. And yeah. if, if, if people could get this concept of value, if you actually are valuable to people, so, so I'm going to throw myself under the bus here. So Suzanne and I have been doing YouTube, I've been doing it a little less than a year, but my channel's been up for more than a year. And you are making a whole lot more money. You have a whole lot more views. That it's an example of you are providing way more value on the platform called YouTube than I am. And that's why I'm making $25 <laughs> and you're making a lot more than $25. But that's, I want people to think about what, regardless of where you're at, if you're working at a job, you're starting a business, if you're in the financial services, if you're doing marketing, regardless of where you are, there's a platform and you can provide value hopefully it's something that you love. And as a result, it's not, you might think you're super valuable. Like I, I think I have some valuable things, but I, I have not, I have, I haven't gained, like I haven't given a ton of value yet when you compare it to other channels. And that's like, I'm someone that like looks at that and says, I'm excited because that is ultimately the metric to start looking back and, and saying, am I actually doing what I want to be doing on this channel? Am I having fun? Am I helping people? And that's why, that's why I love this just this whole show, but then just how YouTube works all together. Anything that you want to say on that? Yeah, I mean, for all of that, I would say that if you're starting a side hustle or even like a YouTube channel, um, you are your only competition. And I think it's important to remember that. Just try to do a little bit better than you did last time because there are always going to be people on whatever platform you're on or whatever job you're in that have been doing it for longer than you and that have um, more experience or a bigger audience than you. And there are going to be people on the other end too. So it's really just comparing your own performance to yourself, but then also connecting with people yeah. on both sides of that. I love it. All right. So now that you're, you're the finance, but you're sharing it even for beginners. So I'm going to just kind of give, I'm going to throw a couple of things at you and I want to get your initial thoughts on it. All right. Okay. Okay. Credit cards. Yes, but use them wisely. <laughs> <laughs> 401k. Yes. Roth IRA. Absolutely. <laughs> TD Ameritrade. 
yep i do like them <laughs> um just just so you know she, uh suzanne you had a video that got was over three hundred thousand views about yeah. td ameritrade yeah so the funny thing with that one is that it's legitimately just showing people how to buy a stock on it from like their very basic stock page and for me putting that out was just it, it was like a question that i would go and ask my dad or like when i was in college i'd be like hey i'm trying to buy this like how do, how do i do that and not everybody has like a parent or someone else that they can turn to that knows how to do that so just putting some super basic piece of information out there um a lot of people found value in that so saving for college oh i don't know i don't know i i have mixed opinions on college on let, let me go back college in general um if you need a specific certification yes otherwise if you have the um persistence and like conviction to make something work without going to college then you don't necessarily need it the app robin hood oh man i don't I to be determined <laughs> yeah uh we're we're making this video at the time where robin hood's going through they're they're getting some publicity i'll just say that um but yeah i yeah just curious and then finally minimalism i i really like the concept of minimalism i think if you're doing it to simplify your own life and just make your life a little bit easier and spend more time doing the things that you like with the people that you like, then yeah. yeah. I love it. Well, <laughs> one thing I love about the minimalism concept is it's like, we have so much stuff and it's like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't exactly. make you fulfilled. And there's something really like, like amazing about like, if, what do you really need? Relationships, you have a computer, probably cell phone is at a need at this point. Cell phone, place to sleep, food, and then just spend money on things that are priority, like a priority to you. And what I love about that movement is they're, I mean, they're just valuing people. I just think they do a really good job valuing people and they value experiences. And the, the American way is be so much in debt that you're, that you can't be present with people and you can't do, you can't have the experiences that you want. And so that's, that's super cool. Yeah. So obviously we could talk a lot about YouTube, about money topics. Is there anything else about those two subjects that you want to share before we wrap up? Um, I think just on either of those, like, don't be afraid to reach out to people, whether that's like getting help with your finances or getting help from other people who have built YouTube channels. Uh, I think in general, people are a lot more willing to help than we think and so just like asking around because no one if you're having a problem with either of those with your finances or with growing a youtube channel no one knows unless you talk about it so i 100 percent agree and your youtube channel will be in the link below so if you're listening to this on the podcast and want to be into youtube two channels for you to subscribe to better wealth and arva bell um and those links will be in the description if you're watching this on youtube you can um after let, smashing the like button which i i do a terrible job by the way reminding people like subscribe like it just doesn't like i forget to say that and I, maybe that's my problem is i don't tell people what to do but anyways that'd be amazing and it'd be also amazing if you subscribe to S suzanne's channel um last question i want to ask you and this is this is we're going to take a step back we're not talking about youtube we're not talking about money we're, we're really talking about legacy in life and if this was your last day on earth and you were with the people that you love the most. What would you, what would your last conversation look like, and what would you make sure to highlight in that conversation? I think I would just highlight like what people and relationships have meant to me, because that's really like the only thing that ends up mattering. Yeah, I love it. How can people connect with what you're doing, support you, and just be in your world in 2021? so definitely the youtube channel you can find me on instagram my username is hey Susie marie and yeah i'm free for any questions that anyone has so always feel free to reach out suzanne thank you so much for being on the better Wealth show i am excited to grow my youtube channel and and reach along with yours i look up to you in so many ways thank you for being such a great example and uh for helping 
people like myself get in get into this to this world. I appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for having me on the podcast, Caleb. Thank you so much for listening to the Better Wealth Podcast. It would mean the world to me if you could hit subscribe, leave a review, and share this with the people that you know and love.